Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Brooklyn Report. I'm Brooklyn McGlynn, and I'm talking to my man Dwayne Martin, actor, businessman, entrepreneur, father, brother, son, friend. You know, he's just, he's, he's that dude. Oh, basketball player, my bad. No, no, no I'm, I'm going, like, every, move, every time you say something, I'm making a move. Oh, <laughs> it's like, shoot the ball! Hey, man. <laughs> Thank you for sitting down with you, man. Like, um, that, yeah. So, Dwayne Martin, man, um, what I'm trying to do is, is, in essence, humanize the, the celebrity or the influential person and, and share with the viewing audience, you know, some of the things that you've done in your life to, to get to the point where you are now, things that you're passionate about, um, any wisdom that you might have, and, you know, we're just going to chop it up and, so let's just start. What, what's the what's the greatest thing you're most passionate about? That's a hard question. <laughs> is and that what this is? Yes. Like I'm like I'm, I'm like be like it's gonna be that like who wants to be a millionaire? Like just Jeopardy. It's gonna be the hardest Man. questions. First. I've never been asked that question. What really? Is, what's my greatest passion? And I and I mean passion in the sense of uh, you know because passion is is a biblical word that means what you're willing to suffer for. You know what I mean? Like, so Christ was willing to suffer for mankind for, because of his love. Like, what do you love? What do you want to do? What do you like to do so much that you're willing to suffer for? That's what I mean by passion. Uh, um, it, with me, it's easy because whatever I'm doing, that's what it is. Okay. Because I don't, I don't really have a choice. Like, I surrendered that, I, I surrendered that idea. What does that mean? That means I only do what I love. <clears throat> so, if I love it, I do it. So I'm automatically passionate about it. It's in the suit. So I don't have to learn to love something. I don't have to be like, oh, that's a good business. I'm going to try it. A lot of people are making money doing it. I don't even, I don't even start there. I'm like, what do I like to do? What would I love to do? What would I do for free? Right? Like a lot of people who... You see people hooping now, they're like 55 years old. They're hooping 10 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> right, right, then, right. Like, they'll never make money from it. They'll never make the lead. Like, it's over. Uh -huh. But they're there religiously. They, they will do that for nothing. Like, that's what your job has to feel like, whatever it is that you're, that you're doing. If it feels that way, then you become a magnet for money mm -hmm. and opportunity. And so it's not the other way. It's everybody's attracted to a light. Everybody, everybody's attracted to a power source. Like you become a power source, the more happy you are, the more inspired you are, the more you're doing what you love to do every single day. Interesting. Um. So, but how? So how do you decide? Like, do you see something and go? Wow, that's interesting. I, you know, I want to learn more about that, and then it becomes a part of you, or you already had things growing up that you're like, I'm trying to conquer. You know, who, acting, business, like what, like how did you decide the, the, the particular things that you were going to do? I didn't decide. Okay. Like, basketball is the center. It's like the triangle offense. Okay. Everything is ran off of that. <clears throat> so for me, basketball is to try over offense. I can get a, I can get a three pointer. I can get a, a pick and roll. I can get a ten footer. You know, it, it creates different opportunities. So basketball is what all of this stuff spent off of. When I wanted to become, I wanted to become a sports agent because I saw that a lot of my friends weren't being treated properly. Like they. They didn't relate to people that were handling their money, giving them advice. Um, and I was like, wow, that would be an interesting business to be in because there's a lot of these guys that need help. Uh, uh, and what, now what, how did you get into acting? Acting was, you know, I was always joking around in a locker room, <laughs> you know, cracking <laughs> jokes. <clears throat> um, and as a basketball player, you are an entertainer. Yeah. You know, you are an entertainer. And I met some friends that went to NYU with me that were actors on the show. I met Michael Jamal Warner and another guy. 
that I was friendly with named Brian. Uh -huh. And one day, they, you know, we were playing ball after the season was over, and, and Brian was like, yo, I got an audition. And I was like, oh, I'll roll with you, then we'll go get something to eat, whatever. I go to the audition with him, I'm like, yeah, what is it like in there? He was like, why don't you go in? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? He just signed my agent's name to go in. So I signed his name, agent's name, I went in, and I got it. Do you remember what it was for? It was uh, uh, North Carolina National Bank. Okay. I'm not sure. And I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but, you know, the opportunity came from basketball. Right, 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 right. I, I would have never been at an audition if, if, we did, if, if they weren't coming to my games and playing ball with me on the offseason. Hey, man, I remember, and uh, I don't know if you do, but. Uh, when I, when, like you helped me decide when I first started acting because I, I came from basketball and uh, I remember, um, you know, me and my brothers had owned a restaurant and we had sold it and I had a check for $50,000, right? And I, I, you were working on a TV show and I, I came in there and I was scared that I didn't know what to do. I had no, like, I was like, it's easier to have a job and not have money than to have a lump sum and not know what to do with it. So you were like, what can you do? And I was like, man, I could play basketball and I used to be pretty good at acting. He was like, do that for five years. If you don't like it, do something else. And I mean, I've been doing it for 15 years. Like, so, you know, it really is starting with that one thing and deciding what you can do. Uh, we'll be back with more with Dwayne Martin. This is the Brooklyn Report. Hey, we're back with the Brooklyn Report. Once again, I'm Brooklyn McGlynn with my main man, Dwayne Martin. Uh, no, the band is dope. I like your band. The band? Yeah, the like band that? is Yeah, the band, y'all weren't here, but the band, the band played some dope music while y'all were gone, but it's, you know. They on a pier. You'll probably be here. You'll see when the new show comes out. <laughs> hey, you know, it's, uh, I can't help but think, like, I used to tease. Arsenio Hall, like, because uh, I used to be like with Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I might be Arsenio Hall. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you have you interviewed a bunch of people that's it's inside man, jokes. Dwayne Martin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're having a conversation that's really inside. I know, right? Outer. Right. Like, right, it's right, the craziest right, thing right, in the world. Right, it's like, right. you got to interview somebody like you don't know. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, I didn't know how to start this year, I Funny, man. Um, so we were talking about how you helped me decide um, to, to, to start my career as an actor. Um, so the thing that I'm, I'm getting from you is that it, it really takes a certain kind of focus and being really specific about something and then allowing that thing to be the seed or the root that branches off into the other things that you decide to do. That's what it's been for me. I mean, what you, you know, recommended, or yeah, you just feel like it's an individual. I mean, it, if you if you're looking, like even if you're a doctor, uh -huh. there's opportunities with your patients. You know, one of your patients might be a zipper king. Right, right, right. Right. One of your patients might own Jamba Juice. One of your patients might be a musician. One, so then there are opportunities to get into other things based on. Your, your center. And if you're watching, if you're looking, then some of that will start to bleed into your life and branch off into, oh, this is something else that I love to do and I'm, and I'm gonna do it. So we, we've talked a lot about, like, you're big on trying to fill voids with, with, with things that you do in business. Like, how, how does one learn to either become so observant that you see that and you, and you like how do you see that and then decide that I'm going after that like without fear without fear of failing like because there really is no failure if you're trying to do it you know what I mean it's almost like the success is in just going after it and whatever happens from it is what happens right so how, how, how have you able been able to to uh, harness that that concept um I want to do a lot of things, right? So then I decide 
which one do I have the energy to tackle now? Do I have the resources to tackle it now? Um, or is that in the third act? You know what I mean? Like, which, what is right now? I have to prioritize these are the things I want to do. Then go, okay, I want to do real estate. Good. Okay, let's do real estate. But I don't want to just do real estate. I want, to, I want if real estate is 12 o'clock, I want to do real estate at 1 o'clock. Like I want to change the experience that people have with real estate or what, what I'm doing. Like, this is a simple idea. Like, if I, like a turkey sandwich. Turkey, cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, mayo, mustard. On white bread. So, I'd rather sell turkey, cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, mustard, mayo, on a croissant. And it'll change the experience of the sandwich, it'll change the taste of the sandwich, it'll, it'll change the feeling that people get from it. And it's like, oh, it's kind of cool, but it's not so far gone that I don't understand it. I can't receive it. It's not so different, it's wild and crazy. It's like, it's just a little twist on something that I'm accustomed to and I'm ready for change. And I, and I like that, right? Yeah. With everything. <laughs> Which makes me think even more specifically, if you haven't been to his new endeavor, Zen Lounge, you should go. They got a turkey burger that has cherries on it. So you speaking about the turkey sandwich, like it's probably the best turkey burger that you've ever had once you get past the idea, like I got cherries on my burger. But string beans. Because there's no lettuce, right? There's, 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 there's string beans, arugula, like a cheese spread. You know what it is? It's Thanksgiving. Cranberry sauce, turkey, string beans, That's macaroni and cheese, a it's in a burger. People, they're already programmed to love it. Right. So you, it's just a different presentation. And you know, it's, it's all that, the crunchy string beans, the sweet cherry, the cheese, the bread, like it's... So, what, what inspires you? What what inspires you and then give me somebody that you that you looked up to because I I'm, I'm big on mentors and having people that have paved, you know, the way before you that you can go to, you know, with your questions and you know, I made this mistake of lessons and just kinda help. Like so what inspire you what inspires you and who inspires you? It's like me. That's about myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, uh yeah, uh, flowing off the top. You hear the band playing, <laughs> the down with the rocks. Uh, the right, music don't stop. Right, no, keep it Even going. Even the commercial, line. we just rehearse you. Uh, this is not rehearsed. <laughs> Dolomite. <laughs> What inspires you and who inspires you? Uh, I, I'm inspired by a lot of things and a lot of people. Okay. But if you, so it's just way too many people and things to name. I, I, can, I can get inspired by the smallest thing. Okay, give right? an example. But what I like to do is, um, I like to, I seek, I, the truth inspires me. Like, I, I seek the truth and stuff. And in people. What does that mean? It means, um, let's see an example, like politicians. Okay. Like politicians are the master of manipulation. Yes, they are. Right? So I have political friends that allow me to become better at business and art because they know what to say, when to say, when to pull back, when to hold it, when to drop it, you know, how to frame things. And they're really interesting people. But the thing about politicians is that, that you know, they don't make real money, right? So they're doing it for power. So they'll, they're not gonna charge you for it. Like you, you, you can learn from them and get that and put that in your in your toolbox. I like artists. I like 
singers. I like, you know, people that are emotional. And I was like, because we sat down. I don't know. If you, I don't know if you came to that dinner with, with, with Lawrence Summers. No. Um, but Will had started this thing where he was like, "Yo, let's sit down with the smartest people in the world." And Lawrence Summers was the uh, Secretary of Treasury for the Clinton administration. So he comes over to the house, Michael Mann is there, Gail, Gail, Harry, like just a bunch of random people, like us. Mm -hmm. And the idea was we can ask him anything that we wanted to ask him. And so we were like, you know, what did you do for the United States of America? Like, what was your job every day? Because I know Secretary of Treasury, but what, what does that really mean? Like, what, you're not protecting a treasure. <laughs> so he goes, okay. And we were like, listen, we know nothing. He goes, all right. I was an anesthesiologist for the United States of America. When the economy, when people are hurting, I inject money into the economy so that they would feel less pain. It really is that easy, huh? Like, yeah, not it's that like, easy, but that's something. They're playing with people's emotions. Yeah. He played with people's emotions. Yeah. It's like, oh, you, you heard me need some Novocaine. You, you okay for a minute. And then, you know, these joints start throbbing later, like, hey, I need more. But, you know, it's like, so that changed my life. Like that changed my. He told us. He said, "Money is virtual. Money is virtual. People, people spend money for emotional reasons. Because they want to feel a certain way, so they do it. That's why everybody is in debt. That's why everybody, you know, can't budget properly because they're only doing things that make them feel in a certain way. From that." I was like, okay, I got it. And that took me on a journey to like not respect money that much and not respect like, and to understand that it's all emotional. So whatever I do that's lifestyle, whether it's real estate, whether it's sports, whether it's restaurants, whether it's fashion, I'm like, how do people feel? Start there. How do I make people feel? What do they feel like when they come here, when they touch it, when they see it, being in business with me? And then from that, money will come. Hey man, y'all getting it right from the man, Wayne Martin, dropping some real, real nuggets on it. Uh, we're gonna be right back with more of the Brooklyn Report. Once again, we're back, the Brooklyn Report. <laughs> Yeah, I oh, know that was yeah, man, yeah. Boy, yeah, he's, he's killing it he's over jamming, there. Jamming, man. Woo! <laughs> Funky. My man Dwayne Martin. Um, man, so it's it's been 20 years since my pops passed away, and I was just thinking, you know, towards the end of last year, like reflecting on. You know, the time that I, that I spent with him, the time that I spent without him, how it's affected me, like the, the, the male role models that I've had in my life since. Um, so it made me start wondering, like, the role of a father in a kid's life. Um, so I'm, I'm asking you, what does it mean to be a father? What does it mean to have a father? or in whatever particular case, not have a father and how that played a role in your development, how it shaped views that you're, now you have two boys and now you're moving forward into fatherhood. So this is just a little separate thing for me. It's like doing a little piece on fathers and the importance of uh, that role in the development of children. Yeah. I just try to simplify it and just, because there's two categories. <clears throat> you either had a bad dad or you had a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and I know people that turned out okay with a bad dad. Yeah. And I know people that turned out okay with a good dad, and I know people that turned out not so good with a good dad. 
So I just all I all the only thing I have control over is which one am I gonna do. That's it. You know, and let them run with it. Hopefully, hopefully they'll pick up some of the, some of the science, you know, that I learned, some of the experience I learned. But I chose to be a good dad, which means what? That means, you know, showing, like leading by example, as opposed to just telling somebody like this is what you're supposed to do. Because they watch, so you make sure that you know. You're always on camera with them. So you just be, as long as you're aware of that, and you're making good decisions, and you know, you're not over-exaggerating things, like you don't get super mad at things, um, and crazy, crazy, crazy about things, and then try and not get so low about things. Like that's, that's my job balance that that thing out. That's interesting, man, because I uh that's actually a a dysfunction that I was listening to uh Paula White who has a series of DVDs. She's a, a, a pastor out of Florida. And one of the most common dysfunctions is she called it the I love you but get away from me. And a lot of parents unknowingly like the kid is doing something, it's like, I love you, I love you, I love you. And then as soon as they mess up, it's like, get away from, go to your room, you're driving me nuts. So it's like, we grow up with the, with the, the sense of hot and cold, and it becomes a dysfunction because we carry it into relationships, and then we become used to the chaos. So that's why I know for myself, like, I would find myself in relationships that when somebody was too nice to me, like, I don't trust you. Like, I'm waiting for the bottom to fall out because I'm so used to it being cool and then not being cool. Being cool and not being cool. And it wasn't until I heard her articulate it that I was like, oh, snap. That's where that's coming from. And I was able to identify it. So, you know, that, that you make that point of trying to stay more even and more balanced. Like, it's really, it's really some really good insight. Yeah, I, you know, and I found out that just probably two weeks ago, and I was thinking about acting, and me as an actor, and I was going, like, I've never reached my full potential as an actor because I don't get way up there, okay. Okay. and I don't get way down there. Like, that's not, I'll get close, but I don't go down there. Why not? Uh, because I was taught not to. Okay. I played basketball. Like I'm, I'm gonna hit a right. 20 footer with 15,000 yelling with two seconds to go in a fucking you know 24 inch hole. Right with six, seven dudes in your face. There's no room for panic. There's no room for being like unstable. Like you're like ice in my veins. Whatever, what's the situation? We're down by 20, so what? Let's go, let's get it back. You up by one, last possession, you know they're gonna follow you, you're on the line. I gotta make these two from 15 feet with everybody doing whatever they do. Like, you can't be this emotional wreck. <laughs> you gotta calibrate, you gotta, you gotta end up, you gotta be like, okay, let me stay stable, let me stay ready. So I didn't really experience a lot of down I experience more up, but as an actor, when you're called to go way down, it's like I don't really know what that's like. I don't make it back. Like, <laughs> no, hey man, your brother just got shot right in front of you, right? You like you're on the ground, snot bubbles, all of that. I, nah, I wouldn't stop. Like, I would be like, you know, with, you know, how to get help, go get the dude that just did it, call them. Like, what is not stay there and, you know, for cinema purposes, do that whole thing with Paul Pierce. <laughs> get, get fouled, like, and act like you did, die, and then get up 30 seconds later. 
But yeah, it's crazy. It's like, man, wow, okay, that's why it's hard for me to go there. Like, because it's like, I've been, I've, it's like being a Navy SEAL. Like, they're not gonna panic around nothing. Right? They're not gonna panic with a dude coming at them with a knife. Like somebody else. You know what I mean? Mama coming with a, Woo! It's like, they shooting, they shooting. <laughs> dude, Navy SEAL be like this. Like, that ain't cinema. That ain't No, it's cinema. really not. The director's asking you to go to go there, and you're like, ah, I don't even know what that's like, man. Like, how do I call on it? I don't even know. You know, and then, like, my wife, you know, she's been taught to experience every emotion all the time. And that's why she's, like, here, there, there, all the way, I'd be like, why are you? Like, why are you so, what's, it's not the end of the world right now. Like, you don't, don't, don't play out the end. Like, you're like, in the moments, it's like, calm down. Like, I'm looking at the end, like, we're gonna win or whatever, but it's like, she lives it. Like, whatever yeah. that is, at that moment. And I'm just like, wow, she was taught to do that. It's a muscle. Yeah. So she's gonna go and play that role emotional ride and then it'd be exhausting because like why go there when you already know at the end it ain't you're gonna be like wow I just wasted all this energy rolling on the floor and with the snot bubbles <laughs> it's hard to turn that thing off man especially as an artist you know what I mean so it's, it's almost like you have to just allow for it you know what I mean like this this is what it is this is how you know I'm going about it you know it's, it's a really interesting thing because it's something that I had to learn how to do. Because you know, listening to you, like my first couple of auditions, I was very stoked, and I, a lot of the feedback I got was he's real stiff. And I used to be like, oh, I'm not. Like, what do they want me to do? Like, and then you know, studying it, learning it, you know, taking classes, and, and ultimately teaching, I was like. Oh, bringing my sport background into the, the, the art of acting. It's like, I had to learn to strip a lot of that stuff yeah. away. And it's, it's definitely a balance. Yeah, yeah, you had to be that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just, it's it's a real difficult thing. I'm, for me, as I continue to act, like maybe when I get older, right now, I'm in here, right? Like, I'm like, <laughs> stand in my you, life. You need me to be here, you right. need me to be, and, and you, you need me to be a, 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 a submissive slave. No, it's not gonna happen. Like, I don't know what it's like. <laughs> and I'm not channeling it. I was gonna name somebody, but I'm not. But we're gonna be right back with our last segment of the Brooklyn Report with my man Dwayne Martin. Man, we are back. <laughs> it's the Brooklyn Report. I'm your host, Brooklyn McGlynn. And my man Dwayne Martin. Um, I just want to thank you, man. Uh, we've been friends for a long time, and uh, you know I appreciate you taking the time to to sit down and, and share with me, share with with everybody. You know how you do what you do, why you do what you do. Um, is there is there any any like what's what's like some wisdom that you could just like the icing on the cake that you could just drop like you know um, to inspire somebody you know, and inspire you know is, a, is an old word as well and it means to to breathe life into it. so somebody that could be watching right now what is something that you could say it could be very simple it could be one word it could be whatever something that you could say to inspire somebody that could be watching You know, I'm not like, I'm not that guy. Like, I'm not like, you know, like Tony Robbins, right? Tony Robbins is a motivational speaker. Like, he knows what to say to people. He, he can put together words that are so poetic that get people moving, right? I, don't, I never, I never say things the same way twice, probably. Okay. Right, so when I'm talking to people, it's completely tailor-made to who they are and who I'm talking to. But 
what I do find is, and I try to get people to understand, is a lot of people have a problem with what to do. Okay. Because they're capable of so many things. Most people that are capable of a lot of things are confused. Right. And they're just like, I just don't know which one to do. I don't know. And I just try to let people know, what would you do for free? And then start from that list. What would you do for free? Everything else, move. What you would do for free, if there's three things, okay. Then they'll start eliminating themselves. Do you have the finances to do that one? Can you still live and do that one? Can you have a job and do that one? Like, the, it'll start to show itself which one you should do first. Because Denzel would always tell me, he tells his kids this all the time, his thing is, do what you gotta do until you can do what you wanna do. Right? And so that, that philosophically, like, I believe that. But more importantly, I like to let people know, you can't lose. You're not gonna die. <laughs> right? So even when you lose, you win. Like, when I lose, I win. It's the craziest thing in the world. And it's like, I get some of the bigger lessons out of the losses than I do with the wins. So people are afraid of failure, but they don't understand that there, there is no such thing when you take the journey. You're not gonna fail. There's no possible, I, there's no, that does not make sense. Somebody put that out there, and just like right now, people got out there to the cliff. The fiscal cliff. The fiscal cliff. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna drop off a cliff. They're telling you you're gonna die. Right. You're gonna drop off the, the the country's gonna drop off a cliff and die. Right. Really? No, we're gonna get better and we're gonna repair. And we're gonna all go towards the problem and fix it and calibrate, and then we'll be able to exist for even longer a longer time, and we'll know how to repair it later or avoid it later. So that, that's my thing, it's just, I just like to tell people, just, yo, figure out what it is, go in that direction, there's no way you can lose, the victory is in doing it, you already won, so the rest of it is gravy. There it is, um, I want to leave it at that, but I, I gotta share a Dwayne Martinism, uh, I, I'm sure you remember, but, uh, I came, I came, you were, she were, I think you were taping, getting personal or something like that one of them show no yeah getting personal and I was I was coming from an audition right it was a basketball audition I was first starting out and I came into the trailer and he was like man what's up you know yeah I just had this audition how did it go oh man it was some BS man like they was trying to get me to do all these tricks playing but I was like that's not basketball like I don't even want to do that he, he gave me a look and I was like what he said, let me ask you something. How much time did you spend getting ready for the audition? So I was like, you know, an hour to shower, shave, you know, get dressed, go down there. He said, okay, how long was the audition? 30 seconds maybe, you know. He said, would it have killed you to go hard for five minutes? And that's something that, that stuck with me ever since. It was like, I spent more time getting ready than the actual thing that I was going to. Would it have killed me to go hard for that 30 seconds or as we like to say, the five minutes and then be done with it? Like, why, why go through all of that, get to the spot and then go halfway? Like, commit. So, piggyback into all that you're saying is like, once you decide what it is that you want to do, what it is that you have to do is like commit to it, go hard. Like go hard for the five minutes and then look at the result. And it's probably gonna be the result that you want, but we talk about don't commit suicide. Like does it make somebody else tell you that it's not for you? Like don't do that to yourself. So, man, thank you brother. My pleasure, man. Appreciate it. Glad you're doing this. Dwayne Martin. See him on the Real Husbands of Hollywood. Very funny, the funniest thing on the hit TV in a long time. It's your boy Brooklyn McLean. This is the Brooklyn Report. We'll see you next time. Ben, give me something. Peace. Well, we don't really have no man.
<laughs> uh, cut.